Is recording? Yay, we're recording. Hi, I'm Melinda McKenzie. I'm Tom Wise. We are going to unpack some shit with you today. I'll be curious to see how this goes. Tom and I are fly by the seat kind of people, but we did talk about that we wanted to maybe do segments, like different segments. So I did in my trusty little book, I divided things up to see if that makes it easier when you and I go through our topics. I broke it down by relationships, trivia, news, pandemic, music, streaming, and tip of the day. I love it. Right? So we'll see if we can pull this off. Because uh, what I like about it is, is that we're not super structured. I don't like a lot of structure. No, but we're going to keep it tight and fun and hopefully interesting. Yes. Okay. So um, tell me, do you have topics or, oh yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Moving stress. <laughs> <laughs> what? Reporting and Americans versus Christians. Oh, Americans versus Christians. Well, you know what? You just moved. Let's start with the moving stress because that's a very um, topical thing that's happening right now. So talk about your move. It's crazy. It's been a very nice move. It's been taking forever. It's been, I mean, I've been moving I, really for, for almost two months. Yes. We were supposed to close. The original closing date was uh, before Christmas. Yes. And I was moving stuff out and preparing the ranch. I mean, I had 4,000 square feet of living in a junk drawer and had a huge, <laughs> had a huge eight car garage, warehouse garage. It yeah. was just packed to the gills with crap. Yeah. you know, product and pallets and paint and things that are broken, never to yeah. repair. It's very, it's very cathartic, cathartic to, to, to have that whole thing kind of, uh, you know, you get rid of a bunch of stuff. It's very, it was very odd. It's, I, allow me to suggest if you're living somewhere every two years, clear it out and start fresh. Yeah. It, yeah. it reminds me of that cartoon of a guy's old man standing in front of his garage and it's packed to the gills. The door's open and it's just packed and his son is standing next to him and he, and he says, one day this will all be yours. Oh, <laughs> no, thank you. No, it thank was madness. You. And then you're always deciding what to, what to toss, what to give away, what, you know, and what to keep. Yeah. The, but my what to keep pile was small. I have, I've been issued, I've got this little office because I'm going to take it all the way down. I got this office and I got my bedroom. Yeah. And I've got, you know, a little bit of storage that I rented. I allowed myself to spend $28 to rent a little storage place because okay. I was going to originally just get rid of everything. Well, you could have some regrets, but you're right. It's hard to make the line. What's the line of what's worth keeping and what do you want to just dump? Yeah. So I mostly kept photographs, a couple of videos, things like that. Yeah. And uh, then I started keeping like little starter things like, well, I kind of like this silverware or this paper towel okay. dispenser, but then you couldn't keep all that stuff. It's ridiculous. So yeah. I allowed myself a couple of Tupperwares of that, some stuff for uh, production, you know, some chairs and stuff. Who knows? Hopefully in the two months, I'll go over there and clear, you know, do it again. So the people that are, that have moved into the home that you closed on, do you think they're super excited? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm very happy for them. It's a great yeah. spot They're, They were, they asked me if they could come like a week early because the closing was imminent. We didn't right. have a date, but all, all the pegs were lining up. We yeah. weren't going to argue about, you know, uh, anything. I wasn't going to argue about yeah. money. They're not going to argue about, you know, septic tanks. So we're sure. all, we're all set on that. Good. That's and, good. Uh, yeah. And, uh, so they asked, could I come out and, you know, start working on the barn? I said, absolutely. Yeah, good. And, and, yeah, but then of course I got stressed out having them there. <laughs> so. Yeah, I would. You know, it is your space, and it's you right. know I get that, but yeah, Move, but moving they, is they hard. Even if it's, I think that you're onto some new adventures, right? You talked about possibly once things clear up, you can travel more. You don't have the big overhead like you used to have, which is very exciting. And you do your job like this, so you could realistically travel and do do your job remotely no no doubt about it so we'll see what happens it's you know it's I kind of forced myself out into a, an uncomfortable position out of a, into a you know into a, a not a comfort zone so yes because because I could have lived at the ranch for a long time and yeah. then, you know lived in, in a bunch of stuff I you know I was I cleaned out I'm not kidding it has to be 20 drawers of things I never opened were yeah. all packed full of stuff 
Is that an American thing, Tom? Do we do that? Or is that worldwide that we just start collecting and throwing stuff in drawers that we never really use? It's crazy. And then, but the, the thing of it is, is that reinforcement of, wait a minute, I need that little tube of glue. Yeah. I know where it is and you find it. It's like, ah, oh, that's that reinforces keep keeping 40, 20 drawers full of crap. Yeah. You know what we ended up doing when we moved here, we moved from a small apartment here in New York to a home, a three level home. So what we did was we, I bought a set of trunks. I used to love uh, my grandma. I had old trunks, right? Like old trunks that had a lot of space. We take the trunks and have them set around as decorator pieces in the house, but that's where we throw our junk. So then we don't have junk drawers. We have trunk junk. So when we need it, we just pop it open. Then we can close it again. You can't really tell how messy. I like that. Yeah. You got to have a little space for just, I can't, everything can't be in its place. There's not a place. There's not a place for everything. Yeah, no, we have, um, we have like duct tape and nails and screws and hammers and stuff. Just when we're like, where do we put it? Throw it in the trunk. So yeah. It's a junk (laughs) trunk. But I don't I like know, it that. could be an American thing where we have too much. I don't know. I have a tendency if I can't find something, I'll just buy another one. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, this I rented the storage. Now, this was for business because I had a lot of warehouse and some brand new materials, pallets and stuff, like 10 pallets and stuff. For uh, 300 square feet, 30 times 10, it was you know, 250 bucks a month for uh, 300 square feet. Think about like a renting a 900 square foot apartment. Right. Three, six, nine hundred dollars, somewhere yeah. like that. It's like, it's, and then this guy's got just rows of these things. Yeah. Each one, each one throwing off a couple hundred bucks a month. That's so the business to have, Tom, honestly, is to have a storage place, I think. I mean, most people here in New York have storage because the apartments are too small. So they'll keep like their winter clothes or their summer clothes because closets and stuff aren't big here. Most people I know that have an apartment have a storage unit here in, in yeah. New York. It was funny because I had a I had I had to come up to Patrick. I said, "Hey, how about a spot for my, you know, like a closet for my winter, the occasional winter jacket or yeah. sweatshirt?" Yeah. So we negotiated, but let's do one of your topics. I'm done yammering. Oh, by the way, I, I purchased my first thing that I I threw away. I threw this out. And now I bought it. Yeah, this you did. From Amazon. Yeah, you did. You always need that stuff. Okay, so um, let's see. What should we talk about? How about, um, well, let's just do relationships because we both like that whole thing. And you and I are pros at relationships because we've been through many of them. And that makes us professionals, I think, right? <laughs> I mean, if you talk about relationships, not dating, relationships, in your lifetime, how many do you think you've had relationships? You mean where I feel like, oh, this could go the distance or that yeah, whatever. I really... Whatever you would consider a relationship. I mean, it could be short. It could be long, right? Once you, yeah. you're like, this is the person I'm with right now. Not dating, but a I'll bet, I'll bet I've had eight relationships. Yeah. That's not a lot when you think about it in your lifetime. No. I don't think that's a lot. No, that's interesting. You know? I mean, I mean, some people could say three or four. I mean, I don't know. Well, I think eight shows that, uh, that you, you're not a quitter. And that you believe in a relationship. That's why yeah. That's why we all try, right? Because we believe in it. I mean, there are times I'm definitely jaded about it. And then I'll watch like a movie or something and think, ah, hmm, you know, <laughs> oh, there is some really cool stuff out there. You know what I mean? Because I think we have a tendency to hear a lot of negative things about relationships and how things go wrong. And people aren't always drawn to the love story part of it, right? Or because really, what's the best thing about a relationship is just having a partner, right? It's not the the thrill and the excitement because that wears off eventually. It's just knowing the comfort of having someone there for you, right? Absolutely. You know, but but, but also the miserableness of having somebody that really you're not in tune with though at the end of a bad relationship that's yeah that's 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 rough i mean i feel like one of the things about not being in a relationship right now that i miss other than just like the occasional like rubbing of your shoulder or touching of hands not not just the sex part but the touching of another human of course is the whole like just sharing the bits of your day that no one else right. really gives a fuck about, right? Just right. The little bits of your day. So I have to be careful when I have a conversation with my sister or a friend to not bombard them because I don't really have a partner to share the stuff that really doesn't matter, but I, I want to talk about it. 
minutia. The minutia. So um, when I was looking up stuff about relationships, I was looking at um, the top questions to ask when you think that you might wanted to be getting into a relationship with someone. So here are some of the questions that they asked. And I thought this was good. One of the questions, Tom, is which parent are you closer to and why? Would wow. you have considered yourself when your dad was still alive closer to one parent over the other? I think clearly, I think almost everybody in the family would say mom. I think that was just her role. Dad was almost like an archetype where, yeah. you know, a little cold and distant, a little, <laughs> little judgmental, kind of like, kind of like a teacher that doesn't want to smile before Christmas. <laughs> what year was your dad born? Gosh, dad would be in his 90s, he's like 95 now. So that's the era he came from. I mean, dads from those times weren't really known to be like the communicative parent, right? Yeah. Well, if you ever watched that movie, uh, the TV show Mad Men, right? Yes. That guy was my dad. Now, he wasn't his personality type, but that was him. 1963, he's wearing a trench coat and a hat. I'm the little kid. I'm the little boy. I mean, that's about the age range and age ratio of, of that era. I was that yeah. kid. I was born in 1958. So I was five, six years old when his yeah. kid was that age. And, you know, and he moved through the 60s. My, my dad didn't evolve to be some sort of hippie in right. 1968. Yeah. But, but that was my dad. Worked downtown Chicago, businessman, hat, suit. Yeah. You know, I don't know that he drank. I don't think my dad drank at work, but. That was the era, that's for sure. Who knows? Who knows? And I feel like, especially dads from that era weren't, they didn't put a lot of significance into having deep conversations with their kids, right? It wasn't really a thought. It was sad. I mean, when I look back at it, I mean, there was some sadness involved in the fact that a few times I tried to generate a conversation with them, like, hey, who did you vote for? Oh, it's a sacred uh, ritual. I don't have to tell it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you. I'm not. I'm not. Listen, some, I'm not yeah, I'm not some. You know, some guy knocking on the door. Be nice to have a. Be yeah. nice to have a conversation, perhaps, about some things. Yeah. But you I know, how, I, I you know, maybe I couldn't even. I couldn't even process it. But I was asking him for his process, his thinking process, yeah. how he evaluates life, how he evaluates yeah. personality, how he evaluates what somebody stands for. You know, that's yeah. that's the conversation I was hoping to have. I guess without really knowing it, but that was the sure. question I asked. Yeah. Well, I think growing up, I mean, I didn't grow up with my biological dad, but my my stepdad raised me from the time I was two. And so he was in the military. So our environment was he was very strict and he didn't sit down and have chats with us. He just told us what not to do. And so it was a very different relationship because it's like, don't make dad mad. Not that he was a mean guy, but you just didn't chit chat with our dad, you know? So I feel like I was closer with my mom growing up because she was all like, how was your day? And what went on? And tell me about of this, course. you know, kind of, of a thing. But as, as my dad got older, I will say, I was very touched by the conversations I had with him and probably because he didn't talk that much. So I was just, I wanted anything from him, right? Any kind of a conversation was precious to me. So, but I think that's interesting in a partner for the future to kind of know what their parent dynamic was. I think I thought that was Absolutely. a very direct dad. And I'm not, with, I, and, and as with, with that regard, I don't feel it's a relationship unless you start talking about things that are important. It just can't be, we're just going to share our day. We also have to right. share our hearts or our thoughts a little bit. Otherwise, yeah. it's you know, no good. No yeah, bueno, no. as they say in China. <laughs> Dude, you always got to fit that in. Okay. One question <laughs> is, are you religious or spiritual? You know what? That kind of ties in with my topic. America, okay. Christianity. Tell me, okay, first tell me, what would you say? Are you religious or spiritual? And have you asked any of your people that you're in a relationship that specific question? I think it's spiritual. But the question is, 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 is you know, I've been kind of trying to think, you know, rolling around, because I'm listening, I'm listening to Dusty Slade. I love Dusty. He's a comedian, uh, okay. touring comic, head, touring headliner. Yes. You know. A million followers. He's got. He's got. He's got some heat, so he can go and he can work anywhere as a touring comic and get top okay. billing. Right. Okay. I mean, and and there's probably about five hundred guys that could do that. Yeah. Okay. So 
Dusty's like he's he's turned his podcast into you know half crazy stories about him selling <laughs> pesticides at Lowe's, okay. and you know he likes to read the Bible, read the Bible, right? Okay. And there's a little there's a little judgment going on as well, and I'm I'm like, again, he's like forwarding the Bible is this is this is the the only way. Ah. And I'd love to have the conversation. It's like, hey, let me ask you a question, Dusty. Yeah. If you were you know, if you were born in Russia, do you think you'd feel the same way about America as you feel about America now? Right. Well, how about if you were born in Germany? Do you think you'd feel the same way? And of course, the answer is no. You'd feel national pride of German and, or Russia, right. right? Right. Or if you were born in Alabama, would you feel the same way about the, you know, the, the Crimson Tide as you would if you were born in, you know, California? Sure. You know, and the Golden Bears? Yeah. Of course, the answer is no. Well, let me ask you a question. If you were born in India, do you think you'd be all jacked up on the Bible? Right. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're forwarding ideas just because you were born in a particular place. Now, there's value. I think there's value in the Bible and the Quran and all that stuff. Right. But to think that, propose that this is the only way, is, 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 it, it blows my mind. Yeah. Well, I think in any circumstance, when you say this way is the only way, then you're limiting your world and your surroundings pretty much. Because you've been crafted by your by the things that you've been influenced by, by where you by, yeah. by where you where you popped up on the planet. Right. Has he lost listeners along the way because of this? Well, no. And he thinks that he gets a lot of Dusty. I love your religious stories, because the folks that like the religious stories are want to encourage more religious stories not, and i don't mind his religious stories yeah but it's always what the like just like i don't mind having lunch with my buddy who's super religious but you need they need to bring to the and they don't but they need to bring to the table the, the fact that this is just the i like latching onto this particular stuff but there's a possibility i could be wrong they never have that possibility that it could be wrong oh, no that's right that's what makes it uncomfortable for me is when anybody comes from any point that this is the way. And I think that's what happened with this. I feel like with this whole Trump nonsense is it became this is the way, only this way. And it made it harder for people to swallow the people that were pushing however they wanted to call. I don't know what they're calling themselves now, but it was just it wasn't open to any other kind of interpretation and they weren't going to listen to anybody else. It was like we are doing this. And you shut people out. I mean, if if they would have been smart, they would have pre at least pretended that they cared about other stuff, but they didn't. It, it, he could have done ten different things, and he'd still be president. I'm 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 appalled at the the way that the Republicans are still kowtowing to him. It's really, you know what? Yeah. If I'm a Democrat, I'm going to say, guess I, I thought first of all they shouldn't have impeached him. The second they shouldn't have they shouldn't have presented the articles of impeachment to the Senate unless they knew they had. 67 senators or 70, 77 senators. You know what I'm saying? I know what I you're think. saying. Yeah. I, I go, why bother doing that unless you know you're going to win? Don't, can't you get a head count? Mitch, count, count them how many guys are going to come. I was right? hoping that they had some meaning that I didn't understand, which is why they, I hope, I was hoping they knew more, which was why they presented it because why present it? What's the benefit here? It's a terrible. It's, it's not, now you get, now you're saying, now he could say once again, you didn't get convicted yeah they, there were 45 republicans that didn't even think it was legal to impeach him i go that's ridiculous clearly it is legal well and the, and then the other argument was well he's no longer the president so you can't really it's that's not even they say that but it just gives them cover it's like you know what i say guess what you could have that fucker <laughs> take take trump and then split your party in two good luck with that go good luck with winning anything you guys are going to get alabama you'll get kentucky you'll get 17 states you could have them all and just yeah. queuing on yourselves in a in a yes. in a queuing on death. yourselves i like that <laughs> go all queuing on they're gonna, yourself <laughs> they're going to lose they're going to lose texas they're going to lose florida yeah. in 4 or 8 years and then yeah. they can all do whatever the hell they want in the middle of the country <sighs> yeah Blow I know. yourselves it, up. It's an unfortunate thing. Do you think we'll get to the point of like there's going to be civil unrest and we're going to start blowing ourselves up? Because I feel like we're a little out of control. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I tell you this: Why are they looking to Trump to to bring in and solidify? We're going to have Trump help us flip around the you know the Senate and flip on. He lost. He couldn't get the Senate to go his way in, in Alabama. 
or, or in, in, in Georgia? What, what do you make? What, why do you think he's such a great motivator? I don't know. I, I mean, to me, because I'm coming from a different perspective and I don't support Trump, to me, it's showing me that they clearly don't know what they're doing. But that's my perspective. I don't they know. Just, they, 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 just, they just can't, they can't shake that coat. <laughs> we, were, we were doing them a favor by impeaching them. Now then he couldn't run again. Take all the steam out. You're welcome. We got yeah. you. <laughs> oh, you want him to run again? Have at it because he's never going to fucking win. I don't know. Well, while we're talking about this, I do have a question for you. I'd be so curious to get your opinion. I've seen a lot of things on social media saying, hey, well, I don't care if you support Trump or don't support Trump. I'll still be your friend. Let's all be friends. I struggle with that line of thinking because I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, but I do care if you support hate. And so I feel like right now, if you are still supporting Trump the man, I feel like you're supporting hate. So I, I don't agree with that. Well, let's all be friends. I don't think you can't all be friends. I tell you, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, Trump, I don't think you, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that he incited a riot. Right? He incited insurrection. He was going to be comfortable with them taking Nancy Pelosi, zip tying her with her hands yeah. behind her back and then dragging her off to whatever. And the same thing for Pence. That would have happened had those guys yes. had the opportunity. Yes. It was crazy. And it, yes. somebody could have been dead over that. It, it was yes. insane. And then people are supporting this or said, oh, let's move yes. on to the next thing. Cruise. That's yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I was just kind of curious because I've seen more of it where they're like, oh, you know, be nice. I'm like, well, at a certain point, you can't be nice. I mean, we, we have to stand up for something and I'm not willing to bend and go, oh, I want to, I don't care if you're my friend. I really don't care. Don't be my I friend. Well, yeah, no, I know, I know, it's, so, it's, it's, yeah. Anyway, I just, I disagree with that. Um, another question in a relationship, tell me if you've ever asked this is, uh, what is your philosophy in life? Has anybody ever asked you that, Tom? What is your philosophy in life? Philosophy. You know what? It's it's a good question. And I think though, I think that I think that if you're asking me that question, it's a great question to have. You know, to be if you had 15 questions, you're going to ask a potential yeah. person, and if they had no thoughts on that, if they like, eh, well, yeah. live each day to the fullest. Well, that's something. You know? <laughs> que sera, sera. Yeah, try to eat every day. But I think I think I think that 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 reflects kind of like um, you know your attitude. I think philosophically that life is a gift. It shouldn't be drudgery, especially with so many modern conveniences that we have to make yes. life easy. We're not we no longer have to scratch out every day to, to eat. Right. We pretty much know that you're going to eat, and then after that, a lot of things are luxury if you've got a place to stay. Then you could say, hey, and then after that after realizing that life's a gift, my uncle, who's the priest, famously said, love one another. That was his famous line, love one another. I said, that's a great philosophy. Yeah. You know, we have to put your ox oxygen mask on first yeah. and then, you know, love one another. I think that's great. So that's, that, 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 would, be, that would be a nice way to, how do you philosophically look at the, the world? I mean, yeah. I mean, you I, always I hear it. Important. And don't you think now, especially now, since we're in the middle of a pandemic, we've had more time to maybe consider these things. I think we get so caught up in the busyness of life. We don't really think about why are we working so hard? What are we working towards? We're caught up in the, I've got to pay my bills. So I've got to do this. And we, I've had more time at least to think about why the hell I'm here or what's I going know. on. Have fun. It, 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 I tell you this, when you get into that mindset a little bit, you start enjoying the times you have with your daughter. It's a sad thought though. When I go to visit my son and the, the kids and see Tina, whatever, it's like these times are just like little capsulations. Yeah. We may never get together like this anymore. I may never that's pop right. over there anymore. Yeah, no, that's really true. I think that's important. So I have some shocking news for you. Are you ready for this? You're not a natural. Oh, I think we all know I'm not a natural anything, Tom. I'm not uh, a natural anything. It is. <laughs> it is two fifty-five. Oh, you got to go. I have to do another segment in five minutes. We've already run through our time. I don't know if you and I can pull off a 30 minute show. <laughs> I, think I think it's a challenge, but I think we should, should, should try, but it's interesting. Maybe we just take a couple of topics. Yeah, maybe. I think I people think get, gonna... I think, I think folks get bored after a while. Anyway. Of us? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Even our stalker is consistent. So how did you know? I I had to buy extra media time on our iPod on our on our server because our shows are now going past over an hour. All right. Okay. Well, we'll fix that. Well, since since we have to wrap, and I'm so sad about this, do you want to wrap with like a tip of the day, uh, as far as you know? kind of what's going on. I feel like you're, you're more like emotional and sensitive about things just because there's it's so like time much a month. I'm about to burst out in tears. <laughs> Bursting in tears is, you know, it's good for you, right? You have, when you it cry, is. when you cry from happiness or sadness, it's a different kind of a tear and it affects your body. So good for you. Yeah. I'm glad that you're feeling emotional. I'm, I'm feeling good though. That's good. Good. So what is your tip of the day, sir? And then I'll have clean to the out. clean the closets. Don't live in the clutter. That's, there you go. Circle the calendar, put something on the date. Next weekend, I'm not doing anything. I'm cleaning the closets, the closets cleaning my shit out. I mean, I got, I had stuff from 10 years ago that I never touched. Yeah. And while you're cleaning the closets, you can clean the closet in your heart as wow, well. Wow. Boom. Get rid of the extra baggage. We don't need it anymore, guys. You don't forgive need Forgive yourself. <laughs> forgive yourself and move on. That's right. So, well, I'm Melinda McKenzie. I'm Tom Wise. You've been unpacking some shit with us. It was the quickest show I think you, Tom and I have ever done. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all good. I apologize for screwing up the week. We only got one half of a show out yesterday. You know what? I, I think we do what we can do. Amen. I try my best. All right. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Yes. I think, right? And stop. <laughs> it's still so